All right, let's see how many takes this takes me. Uh, first rule of this channel is we do not talk about this channel. Second rule of this channel is this is not legal advice. So uh, welcome to the After Waiver Show Week 8. Um, so the real-life trade deadline is coming up on October 31st. I may end up doing a, uh, a video tomorrow or so on uh, picking guys up um, and speculating on if anybody gets moved. I don't know if anybody's going to get moved. Maybe Dalvin Cook. Um, we'll talk about some of the other players today. Uh, mostly right now, uh, week eight, going into uh, the, the upcoming bye weeks, I want to be picking up my defenses and squaring away my, uh, my roster for these uh, uh, upcoming bye weeks that I know that are going to be going on and maybe even getting ready for the uh, uh, fantasy trade deadline in my league uh, to make that one move that hopefully pushes me over the top. So uh, I'm not as worried about stashing guys anymore. I think we, I, I brought this up last week. I think we kind of know what everybody is and what everybody's going to be. So um, there probably are going to be less surprises. The surprises that happen uh, I are probably predictable from the standpoint of like handcuffs or something like that. I don't know if there's, Anybody that's going to be jumping off the table saying, hey, uh, I need to be picked up um, because they perform in such a manner that after uh, seven weeks, we haven't been able to see already. So and then the other thing I want to do is I, I want to be looking at my upcoming opponents uh, schedules for the next few weeks and know what they're going to be thinking, especially if I can predict next week. So I can put it in the block now instead of having to worry about who they would be plugging in their lineup uh, uh, next week. So uh, there's no bye weeks this week for everybody, but uh, week nine's coming up and the bye weeks are the Broncos. Maybe not anybody that's going to be too worried about missing that week. Uh, there's going to be the Lions. There's a lot of guys on that team. Um, the Jaguars, again, probably a few guys there. And the Niners, a lot of guys there. So uh, I did uh, my Chasing the Dragon video on uh, the waiver ads, you know, the, the knife fighting video. Um, if you're interested, I don't know how much I will or will not be repeating myself. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try and keep this more of the important parts. Um, so if, if I can keep it a little shorter and cut out, uh, all the stuff that's, uh, not as interesting. If, if you guys like the stats and me just reading out all the stats, I'll go ahead and I will do that. So, uh, to start off, um, did kind of watch some of the, uh, the, the Niners game with the Vikings. Uh, Brock Purdy was a 30 for our 21, 30 for 272, uh, one tug, two picks. Um, the picks were okay. You know, they were whatever. They're not too concerning. He's still uh five or 19. So he's still a little nimbly bimbly. Um, I would say if you're uh, a Brock Pur Purdy owner, you, you know that you're not going to be competing with the elite quarterbacks. You're just looking for that 40 degree day or slightly better. And I think he got you there. Um, I wouldn't be messing around too much or, or really streaming against uh, most matchups, you know, unless you can really predict it like the Browns week. Uh, CMC did go for 100% of snaps. He was 15 of 45, one tug, uh, three for three for 51 uh, through the air. Another uh, another touchdown. He did have fumble. Um, he's dealing with what they said is a slightly torn oblique. Um, I, I watched him. He looked fine. So I'm not I'm less concerned now. Uh, Elijah Mitchell did do uh, eight percent of the snaps, one carry, negative one yard. So uh, with uh, Jordan Mason not doing any of the snaps, I'm going to go ahead and say that like maybe Mitchell is the handcuff. But again, I think if if CMC does miss significant action, you're not replacing him, and I don't think either of these running backs is really going to do anything. So there may be better guys to be worrying about um, instead of just hoping that you get what sixty percent of CMC at this point. Um, there's no Debo in this one. Um, he's scheduled to miss the next couple of weeks with a, a fracture in his shoulder. Uh, Brandon Ayuk was a uh, 98% of snaps, uh, seven targets, six receptions, 68 yards. Again, he, he looks good. Um, I, I don't know if I would necessarily put him up there in the, uh, higher tier of wide receivers from a fantasy perspective. Um, and it's probably not something the offense is ever going to do to give him the higher volume of targets. We'll talk about like the big target guys. So like he's going to be in that, you know, low tar lower targets, higher efficiency type of range. And if he just doesn't do it, then he doesn't do it. And he's going to fall into that like wide receiver two range. Uh, Jawan Jennings, uh, he was at 74% of snaps with Debo out uh, nine for five for 54. He's the clear number three at this point. So this would be a guy that um, if you're in deeper leagues like JSN um, now knowing that, uh, Debo may miss some time if you're really hurting. Uh, Jawan Jennings is a guy that you could maybe plug in and know that this is the guy who's going to 
potentially be able to get about, you know, uh, six to 10 targets. They may not be the best targets, but there may be, uh, he may be more predictable than some of the other guys that are out there. Um, George Kittle was at 96% uh, snaps, seven for five for 78. So he, he gave you what you thought you were going to be getting considering that Debo was out. Um, the defense uh, I have maybe not uh, next week against Cincinnati. Then there's a bye week. Then you got ax at Jacksonville before Tampa Bay. So, I mean, maybe you can use them, maybe uh, stream. But again, this is what I'm using my roster for right now. I'm trying to clear a spot so I can carry two defenses and be one week ahead at this point in, in, in the uh, the season. So the Bears, uh, Justin Fields is doubtful for week eight, still has not been IR'd with his thumb. Uh, Tyson Bajan was uh, 29 or 21 to 29, 162 with a touch, uh, a, a tug through the air. And then he was three for 24 on the ground. He looks serviceable with a little bit of upside. Um, he's got that nimbly bimbly that you want. Um, so he can buy some time and get a little bit, you know, uh, that rushing floor. Um, he's still probably a guy that should be in all dynasty leagues at the time being just stashing him away. He's got some low end uh, streamability in deeper two quarterback leagues because of that rushing upside. And, th and that gives him a better than average chance of falling into the end zone. I actually have uh, his chart for uh, the next gen stats and you can just kind of see they're just, they're just letting him do what, um, you know, he's comfortable doing the short throws. They're not pushing it vertically. That may hurt DJ Moore and Cole Komet down the line, but this was a mostly positive game script. So, you know, he doesn't have to push the ball down the field. So if, if you want that higher upside um, you, and you, you really have to roll them out, you, you're, you're pushing for a game where the Bears can't just bludgeon another uh, another team with Deonta Foreman. Uh, let's see. So uh, uh, speaking of Foreman, he was only in on 46% of snaps, um, 16 for 89, two touchdowns on the ground, uh, five uh targets three receptions 31 yards another touchdown um the low snap percentage for me is a sell especially with roshan coming back um and he's in line to practice um tomorrow or today i guess it is i haven't seen anything on him uh and then khalil herbert's maybe coming back from ir week 10 uh so his ability to win me uh next week may actually be limited with roshan coming back and probably taking some more of the valuable touches um, again, like Foreman may not be the receiving down back and he may not even be the goal line back. He's just going to be that grinder. Um, so like, and then that ability to translate post the next few weeks uh, for Foreman to actually win me a championship is very closed. So he's only going to give me the opportunity to maybe win a couple more games. And if someone wants him because they need him because of the bye week or, or how few actual running backs are, it's something that I would have to consider. Um, DJ Moore was on 89% of snaps, uh, nine for eight for 54 yards through the air. And I'm not really concerned because the target volume is there. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised that he bounces back at, 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 any, at any given week. If Bajan continues to improve or fields comes back and, and fields can kind of do what he was doing beforehand. Like, you know, DJ Moore should be fine. Um, in that like flex wide receiver, three, uh, wide receiver two range. I don't know if you're going to get too many more of those huge spike weeks, but you know, I, I would be rolling him out there um, because he could do it. He's already done it this year. So, again, predictability, um, it is within the range of outcomes that he could do it again. Cole Komet was at 89% snaps, uh, no targets. And, and, again, that doesn't concern me if I'm rolling out Cole Komet because I know that's probably going to be par for his uh, range of outcomes. So he's still that low-end tight end one with spike weeks. Um, the defense is uh, still has a little bit of sneaky appeal for the next three weeks against the Chargers at the Chargers at uh, the Saints and uh, home against Carolina. And again, like the Chargers may not be as good of an offense as uh, we thought we were going to be. The Saints are a little um, inconsistent, and then Carolina's got a whole bunch of problems. So, you know, if if I don't have the roster, roster flexibility or um, that's all that left, le is left for me, I, I can maybe think about rolling out the Bears after their last performance. So then we got the, the Bengals. And uh, I will talk about this with good old Gardner Minshew there. So Chase Brown, and I will pull him up for you guys. Um, he's a big stash, especially for your mix and owners. If you're a mix and owner, I would be picking Chase Brown up because um, last week he was only in on 7% of the snaps, but he did get one carry and a target. So I would be anticipating this to go up a little bit. And if this doesn't turn into uh, some type of timeshare, 
I, I could definitely see that Chase Brown may end up eventually being the actual handcuff. So if I have the um, roster fl- flexibility to um, stash him to see what this what goes on with this backfield for this week, this is something that I'd be aware of um, for the mix and owners out there in uh, you know real world land. Let's see. Um, the Bills, uh, James Cook was at 52% of snaps. I just totally skipped over Josh Allen because, you know, you know what you're getting with Josh Allen, so I don't really care about his stats. So anyway, um, James Cook was at 52% of snaps, uh, 13 for 56 on the ground, uh, three for three for 46 through the air and a tug. So again, like that's what you're looking for when you're rolling out James Cook is that he can be somewhat consistent in the passing game. And I'm going to talk about a lot, uh, a lot about the Bills today. Um, when it comes to that, because I just don't think there's going to be a lot of consistency outside of uh, Stefan Diggs. I was listening to a few podcasts on it and watched some of the game, um, and I would tend to agree with what was said. So I don't know how much you're going to be able to rely on James Cook getting the receiving work and or falling into the the, the end zone. Um, I, again, if I'm rolling him out, he's going to be a flex uh, or an uh, RB2 that I know I'm playing with fire. Uh, L- Latavius Murray was at 45% of snaps. Four, uh, four for eight, not very efficient on the ground, but two for two for 20 through the air. And again, I kind of would tend to think this is going to be a, uh, you know, a coin flip based off of who's going to get the actual work. And since Josh Allen is still primarily the goal line running back, like, again, I don't know how interested I would be to roll out either of these guys unless I was desperate. Uh, Stefan Diggs had 12 targets. Um, again, joking aside, he, he got his day done late with like a 25-yard touchdown catch, and I think it was a broken coverage. Uh, Gabe Davis was at 96% snaps, uh, five targets, only one reception for six yards, and I just keep rolling him out. He had 78 uh, air yards. Again, he's going to be in that playing with fire, boom, bust range. Um, so I didn't talk about this yesterday in the Chasing the Dragon video with Dalton Kincaid, but uh, and I'll explain why. Dawson Knox had a wrist surgery. He's out in desperate definite out indefinitely. So uh, Dalton Kincaid was eight for eight for 75. And that's going to be in that low end, uh, tight end one, boom, bust range. Um, He only had 37 air yards. So most of what he did was off of yak and they're still checking it down. So the reason why I, I don't want anybody else in this offense, especially it, even though they're a higher volume passing game is because uh, uh Dalton Kincaid's not necessarily going to inherit the Dawson Knox role. Uh, Kincaid plays that move tight end you may have heard about or the big slot. And uh, Dawson Knox is more of your inline, can play more of your inline Y and be a blocker. I just don't see that they're going to replace Dawson Knox one for one with Dalton Kincaid. Um, So for me to really feel comfortable running Kincaid with as low air yards as he has, um, you know, I would want him to be like the number two in the offense and, and be able to guarantee that's what he's going to be. And I can't do that because I know that number two in a lot of weeks, if not all the time, is going to be Gabe Davis and he's going to get those air yards. So at worst now, I'm looking at uh, you know Dalton Kincaid being the number three and that's behind Stefan Diggs, who's out- averaging 11 targets a game. So in order for Dalton or Dalton Kincaid to be a, a, a set and forget tight end, I have to be able to guarantee that he's going to get about six or more targets a game, which I don't think any of us can believe that he's going to do in this offense with uh, Diggs and, and Gabe Davis, and then potentially James Cook getting uh, design passing work out of the backfield whenever they feel inclined. And, and then on top of all that, um, he's still not going to be the red zone guy in this offense because they have Stefan Diggs, they have Gabe Davis, they have Josh Allen you know, deciding to run it in himself. And Ladavius Murray is probably the goal line running back. So, like, I just don't know how much um, predictive value he's going to have, other than like I get lucky and they actually throw it to him, or he breaks two tackles and gets in the end zone um, with Yak. Um, unless I really start seeing them push the ball, the the ball vertically down the field to him. And again, it's not that I wouldn't be picking him up this week. It's just that I don't want to be paying to find out. Um, and then again with the defense to finish off the Bills. Uh, they disappointed again this week against the Patriots, um, and I, I guess I'm still rolling them out against Tampa Bay and holding them, um, even though I will be rolling my Rashad White, White shares against the Bills because they can't stop the run. So do what you want to do with the Bills' defense. All right, moving on to the Broncos. Uh, uh, Javante was at 53% snaps, 15 for 82, another 4 for 3 for 14 through the air. Um I don't know with their schedule how often that we're going to have a game script where 
the Broncos are able to stay in the game and really ride Javante. Uh, I, I, you probably can't sell him. I wouldn't be buying him. And I don't know how much I'd be rolling him out if I want to, because you know, this may be the highest that you get to get production wise out of them. Um, because their ability to get into the red zone and then have them fall into the end zone is low. And Javante Williams is like before the injury, he's a four, six back. So again, you know, if, if someone wants to buy at this point, I will be getting out from underneath my Javante shares. All right, uh, Jamil uh, McLaughlin was at only 17% snaps. Again, this may be a, a, a game flow type of issue that you know may be more predictable down the line that he will, his overall uh, usage will go up, but he did have the opportunities efficiently uh, 5 for 45 through uh, on the ground and then two more targets for only one reception um, one yard. Uh, Samaj P. Ryan was at 25% snaps, two for 10, and then another three for three for 31 in the air. So it kind of gives me an idea of how they're going to use the backfield in that neutral game script. Um, P. Ryan's going to do the dirty work. McLaughlin's going to be like the, uh, you know, change the pace guy. And then, uh, Javante is just going to get most of the, 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 the regular work. Um, and, uh, again, I, I just don't know what to, if, if we're going to be able to predict, predict a good game flow for the Broncos. Um, they may be in bad scripts, which means I could see McLaughlin going up a little bit and then uh, Javante being phased out. And then I don't think Samaj P. Ryan has much fantasy value, regardless, even if Javante goes down. And then uh, to finish off with the wide receivers, uh, uh, Jerry Judy's at 86% snaps, six for six for 76 and a touchdown. Uh, or excuse me, that was Corlin Sutton, uh, 86% snaps, six for six, uh, 76 and a touchdown. Jerry Judy, 68% snaps, five for five and 64. So, um, when it comes to potential trades for these guys, I don't know if they're going to go any place that um, is going to jump out and say, Hey, now I know I'm going to get the, the opportunity. And if one of them leaves, it doesn't necessarily mean that that guy in a bad offense is just going to become a target funnel. Um, so I guess I'm holding on to both of them and just waiting to see. And again, if I can throw them into a deal to get them to be someone else's problem so I can upgrade, that's what I'd be doing with both of them. But you know, Corlin Sutton at this point, just because he's getting it done, you know, sometimes I don't care how the sausage is made. Um, and again, it still bothers me that Jerry Judy snaps are relatively low, and, and that might just be a problem that the coaching staff doesn't like him. Um, Marvin Williams was at 31% snaps, one target. Brandon Jones was at 37% uh, snaps, and uh, our, our buddy uh, Lil Jordan Humphrey was at 34% snaps. And that kind of bothers me because like those opportunities are just not going to go to Jerry Judy right now. They're going to these other guys, and I don't know why. Um so moving on to the Browns, uh, Deshaun Watson's sh shoulder was evaluated, and they say he's day-to-day, -day, um, whatever that's worth. Uh, Jerome Ford was at 43% snaps, uh, 11 carries, four, uh, 74 yards, and a touchdown. Most of that came on a 69-yard run. He was very hit or miss on his other carries. I watched the game. Like, some of them, he does look good. Other ones, like, it's not just his fault. The, the they, He had a lot of negative plays, and there were just guys getting in the backfield, but there's other problems where he's – He's no Nick Chubb. I'll just put it like that. Um, he did have another four targets, two receptions for 20 yards. That's his big value there. And he is a 4-3, a, 4-4 a four, four, four guy, so he can take any of them to the house. Um, Going to miss, I think it said, one to two weeks with a low-grade high ankle sprain for whatever that's worth. I you know, expect him to miss a while. And that he was seen in a walking boot after the game. So Kareem Hunt was only at 25% snaps, 10 for 31, two, uh, two uh, touchdowns. Um, on the ground, he did have one target. Um, I'm going to guess with his, his usage is going to stay about the same. I bet he does get some of the more um, trusted uh, high uh, value touches like the goal line stuff and some of the receiving stuff that's going to cut into Pierre Strong, who I, I guess I would be stashing. Um, I, you know, I, you know, he's going to be relatively cheap to get off of waivers um, and he may uh, fall through in a lot of leagues. He was eight for 25 on the ground. And I, I imagine he's going to inherit a lot of the the um, in between the twenties work. So I mean, who know with the, with a the defense they're going to be in better game scripts. So I can imagine that he has a little bit better opportunity. And he is another like four three four four guy. So I mean, you know, with good size. So I am really interested in stashing him and seeing how it shakes out over the next couple of weeks, um, especially if I'm desperate in uh, week nine. Uh, uh, Amari Cooper was at 88% snaps, had eight targets, to only two receptions for 22 yards. Not going to be un, uh, surprising with uh, Deshaun Watson, um, whatever, and uh, PJ Walker. 
Um, and and again, he's just a guy I have to realize I'm rolling, uh, playing with fire, and it's gonna not matter. He's gonna be inconsistent the rest of the year, and if I if I sit him, he's gonna burn me, and if I start him, he's gonna burn me. So just be aware of that. Uh, Elijah Moore was a uh, four for fifty nine on seven targets. Um, again, he's gonna be a very safe uh, low end play over the bye weeks, I think. Uh, David Njoku, 96% snaps, nine targets, five receptions, 54 yards, nine targets, only 22 uh, air yards, but I'm going to keep rolling him out because I know that spike week's going to eventually happen. And with all the other tight end problems, um, I can do worse here. Um, and the defense uh, is a play at Seattle and at home against Arizona. And maybe I'm looking to stream somebody else uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, the Ravens coming up here or at the Ravens. So the Buccaneers, uh, Baker May is okay. You know, uh, they got Thursday night football coming up, so never trust Thursday night football against the Bills, but it's the Bills, and the Bills' defense hasn't been good. So I don't know why, outside of two quarterbacks leagues, anybody would really want to be rolling out Baker Mayfield. Uh, Rashad White uh, dominated the backfield with 75% snaps, 13 carries, 34 yards. They don't have a good interior offensive line, and Rashad White has always been limited when it comes to his ability to run the football. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about Keyshawn Vaughn here in a second. Uh, Rashad White was six for six for 65 in the air. That's why I, I would trade for him or I would draft him in that low end uh, RB2 range or the ability to plug him in during bye weeks. But, you know, it's going to be difficult because of the, the limited amount of running backs that are available. Um, and I, I, I still see that he's going to be the, the backfield leader um, and get the passing work, hopefully, in, in positive game scripts or um, predictable game scripts because the Bucks are not going to necessarily be good. Keyshawn Vaughn was at 25% snaps, uh, four carries, uh, you know, only seven yards, did have a target, and I don't really see him being a threat to uh, Rashad White. The threat is Chase Edmonds um, has been designated to return off the IR. This may cut into Rashad White's work more than anything else, um, but I could definitely see that Edmonds inherits the, the Vaughn work, and if uh, Edmonds, who they've already tried out, just hasn't been efficient, I could definitely see Edmonds – uh, not really affecting Rashad White and, and just taking over that other work unless he can get the hot hand. Uh, Mike Evans was at 78% snaps, 8 for 6 for 82 yards and a tug, and he got it done against A.J. Terrell, and he looked good. So, I mean, that the wide receiver apex does not always hit at uh, 29. He's 30 this year. Chris Godwin was at 70% snaps, uh, 12 targets, 6 receptions, 66 yards. Trey Palmer was at 64% snaps. Uh, only two targets, one reception, five yards, only seven air yards. And and this is one of the things I would bring up when, when um, we're chasing uh, stats, that uh, progression is not always linear in fantasy football. Um, Trey Palmer is going to get there. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be necessarily next week or anything else, but he's going to get there. He's going to have that spike week. And understanding that he's not predictive, it may uh, help to not – overspend on the waiver wire but then the on the other hand he's a guy that i know i can roll out there on any given week and have that um that josh downs type of outcome just based off of uh, what we've seen in the past with his usage uh kate ott in the tight end was at 96 percent snaps six for five for 43 um and again he's going to be limited by his role in the pecking order but uh, in the tight end wasteland he's a guy i know i can get out there and he's going to give me the usage because uh, your know, opportunity is still the king uh, moving on to the Cardinals. So this may be the last week for Josh Jobs to start. Uh, so, uh, and I brought this up last week with Keontae Ingram. It was not surprising to me that Keontae Ingram got 0% snaps this week. Damian Williams was at 18% snaps, only had one carry for two yards. Amari DiMercato was at 80% snaps, 13 carries, 58 yards, another five targets for four receptions, 17 yards. And hopefully you held him. They do have a very bad schedule until Connor comes back. And, and this is where I would talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Um, I can't control who is healthy or how they perform. I can't pre you know, predict uh, how guys are going to get traded or if the coaches are good or they're bad or they know what they're doing. I can look at the stats and I can make an educated observation on what's going to happen. And again, like I said, opportunity is always going to be the king of fantasy football. And if I'm chasing something right now, a guy who's getting 80% snaps and roughly 15 to 20 carries a game, I don't care about the schedule. I can control that. I can go, I know that this guy's got a better opportunity than somebody else. Uh, Amari DiPercato is a, a 4 4 40 guy. He's got good size. He's got good athleticism. The biggest thing is I do want to be getting uh, speculative pieces of the Cardinals going forward. I don't know if James Conner is going to come back because of the fact that 
the Cardinals may be wanting to see what they have for next year now. Um, and seeing how they, they already know what they have in James Conner, they may want to know what they have in uh, De Mercado. That excites me when it comes to spending money. And just from the opportunity standpoint of De Mercado, um, knowing that he's going to give me the opportunity because of the volume to win me the next few weeks until at least Connor comes back, I do like. So um, I'm, I'm buying Hollywood Brown. He was at 92% snaps, 7 for 349. And I'm buying Michael Wilson, 83% snaps, 5 for 3 for 26. And uh, I will, I want to see how this shakes out going into the uh, end of the season because there's going to be limited guys that have a road to win me a championship and being able to buy these guys cheap right now on the relative off chance that they can give me 10 to 11 targets a game like a Stefan Diggs with the air yards and everything else to win me my league because Kyler Murray, and I don't particularly think Kyler Murray is that good of a quarterback, but he's a significant upgrade to Josh Dobbs. And that means that if the usage with Hollywood Brown and Michael Wilson can, may, remains consistent, but there is a better guy delivering them the football, um, I want pieces of that early. Speaking of which, Zach Ertz, uh, he was at 53% snaps, but he got IR'd with a quad today. So he's going to miss the next four weeks. This is not surprising, all things considered. Trey McBride was also at 53% snaps, but he had six targets for three receptions for 29 yards. So again, Dalton Kincaid or uh, Trey McBride, I want Trey McBride right now because I'm going to probably be able to get him for relatively free to find out um, for rel the, uh, about the same amount of targets. And uh, they're, they have about the same athleticism, and maybe Trey McBride can be used more in that vertical role instead of just the, the check down with the Yak Monster. So again, I want to be speculating and buying pieces of this offense on the cheap um, from other people, knowing that there is going to be a change in quarterback, if not this week, next week. And um, I can predict going forward to a certain extent that that there may be the possibility of, of greener pastures. All right, moving on to the Chargers. Justin Herbert was uh, 30, uh, 17 of 30 for one touchdown, two interceptions. And I brought I talked about this um, on the sausage show. Um, buying elite quarterbacks has a lot of value because of the rushing floor that they bring and the potential for the spike weeks based off the rushing yards. If Justin Herbert can't maintain the high volume passing attack, and, and that means multiple, multiple week or weeks of multiple touchdown passes, he's not worth it. And I can go get a, a, a Brock Purdy for to put up the same stat line that he's going to do. Give me that 40 degree day with a little bit uh, of an opportunity to win my week. So right now with Justin Herbert, I am definitely looking at selling to someone that thinks that he's an elite quarterback because you know he's been regressing since week three. And that means, in my mind, I might be able to use him to upgrade some other place from a quarterback needy team that thinks that Justin Herbert may be uh, elite when he's may not even be sub elite anymore. Um, Austin Eckler was at 63% snaps, 14 for 45, uh, two targets, one reception, one yard. And it's the lack of receiving work that's a little concerning. Again, some offenses that we thought we were going to be good are going to be bad. Some offenses that we thought were going to be bad are going to be good. And I'm not saying sell Austin Eckler. I'm just saying I'm concerned about that lack of receiving work because that's why um, I was buying him where uh, I was at the top of a draft. Um, Josh Kelly was at 37%, 7 for 75, uh, and a touchdown. It was a 49-yarder. So it's not something that I would expect to continue to go forward because we did see Josh Kelly um, with the backfield to himself, and he wasn't good. Uh, Keenan Allen was at 94% snaps, 9 for 4 for 55 uh, Josh Palmer was at 98% snaps, seven for five and 133. And I can, can I, I would guess that I could see that Josh Palmer is going to live in that um, you know high end wide receiver three, low end wide receiver two range for the rest of the season. Uh, Quinton Johnson again, probably not going to talk about him anymore. Not fantasy relevant. 54% snaps, two for one for 20. So unless there's a major change there, I'm just not going to be talking about him. Gerald Everett and Donald Parnham were at 48% uh, snaps for Everett. Uh, four for three for 26, two red zone targets, a touchdown. Going to be uh, both these guys are going to be very touchdown dependent. And Donald Palmer was at 40% snaps, three for one for nine, and a red zone target. So as long as they're cannibalizing each other's uh, red zone targets, I'm not interested in any, either of them because it's just a coin flip if I'm right. Um, and then the defense is a cute play against Chicago if you think that Tyson Bajan is not very good at football. I, I wouldn't be uh, guessing that. I think that if if that matchup occurs, the uh, Bears might try and grind the game down, which means the sacks and the turnovers just aren't going to be there. Um, 
if if you think that the Chargers are a good offense and that they will change the game script, then I would be rolling the the defense against the Bears because that means now Tyler Bajan has to push the ball vertically down the field. Uh, Patrick Mahomes did Patrick Mahomes things. He was quarterback one on the week. I'm not going to talk about him too much. Um, Isaiah Pacheco. So to pump the brakes on Isaiah Pacheco running back one stuff, only 53% of snaps, 13 for four, uh, 32, four for four for 28 and a ton. I like all that stuff. He did get the red zone carry and he did get the target in the red zone for a touchdown. The snap share with the other running backs still continues to concern me because there are going to be weeks where Jarek McKinnon, who had 37% snaps, two for two on the ground, another two for two for 24 in the air. He is the one that cashes in that red zone work. So now Pacheco's uh, 40 degree day becomes less than a 43 to, uh, 40 degree day because he doesn't get the touchdown because it goes to McKinnon or CEH who did 10% of the snaps two for five and did have a target. That's just too much for me to go Isaiah Pacheco league winner. He is probably in that high end running back two range. So I wouldn't be worried about that. Rasheed Rice was at uh, 59% of snaps, six for five for 60 yards uh, and a touchdown. So again, the breakout is here. Um, only 32% of or 32 air yards. So again, he's a yak monster. That's how they're going to use him going forward. And I can see maybe he can get into eight or nine target, uh, you know, ceiling type of game. He might get some downfield shots, but I think he's relatively capped at this point. Um, is a probably a weekly role at this point. But again, I, I, I just, the, the ability for him to win my league is limited. His ability to give me a 40 degree is much more predictive. Uh, uh, Tony was only at 19% snaps, one for one for 13. Sky Moore was at 60% snaps, uh, three for two for 15. And he, again, he got 41% or 41 air yards on his three attempts compared to the six attempts that Rice had at 32 air yards. That's why I have the air yards here today. And again, with MVS, 69% snaps, five for three for uh, 84, 46 yard touchdown pass, 69 air yards to kind of get a gauge of how they're using these guys. That's why I would, I would want to see Rasheed Rice air yards go up because that means that he's used, being used in the totality of the, the route tree and not just in this uh, shorter yak guy contested catch type area. But uh, you know he's going to be a red zone guy, and that's why I, I think his overall value is a little bit higher attached to this offense in Mahomes. Uh, Justin Ross was at 29% stats. He did get arrested yesterday on some felony charges or something. I don't know. I haven't heard anything else about him, and he's marginally – relevant in dynasty uh mckee uh, uh mccall hardman was at a uh, 16 snaps three for one for six and did have 47 air yards how he would fit factor into the the wide receiver pecking order um already talked about rasheed rice uh in my notes travis kelsey was at 75 percent snaps 13 for 12 uh 179 and a touchdown he's a unicorn um noel gray for you fantasy guys out there that care he was at 51 percent snaps one for one for eight um, and the defense can be a set and forget thing. They're at Denver, um, can be used against Miami. We're going to talk about Miami a little bit later, week nine. Um, and um, I'm going to need to stream for them anyway because they have a week 10 bye. All right, moving on to the Colts. So uh, Gardner Minshew, bell of the ball, uh, 23 for 15, 305, two tugs and a pick, uh, three for 29, two tugs on the ground because he's got that little bit of nimbly bimbly that I like. Like I said, I've been using Gardner Minshew uh, going back to his uh, rookie year and his second year in the league. He did have three fumbles and a pick. Um, he's probably a very high-end streamer, low-end starter. Uh, kind of think uh, Brock Purdy in that that range. Um, probably a safer floor for Purdy. Um, and, and this isn't a joke. And he can be a little bit of a turnover machine, but of, of all the toys that they have in the offense – um, with uh, Jonathan Taylor and Moss leading it on the ground. Then they still have Pittman, Downs, Pierce, and whoever this they decide to use at tight end. He's got the ability to give you um, a pretty close to a 40-degree day as a floor with a little bit of upside. And he was able to do it this week, however he got there against Cleveland. So um, you know he's probably a lot safer if you're trying to roll out your Sam Howells and your Desmond Ritters. So Jonathan Taylor was at 50% snaps. Let you look at this. Uh, 18 for 75 and a tug and another four for three for 45. Um, and this may be better for him down the line. Um, if he's in some type of time, timeshare, even though that timeshare is probably going to cut into his ceiling. Um, Zach Moss was at 50% snaps, uh, 18 for 57, two for one for five 
and it, this looks like a legit 50 50 split um and your guess is going to be as good as, my, as mine the probably the best outcome for moss is he gets shipped at the deadline but i could definitely see them um trying to keep jt a little bit uh you know healthy by by splitting the work between the two of them michael Pittman was at 97 percent snaps five for two for 83 i did have a 75 yard touchdown that he broke like two tackles and took it to the house and sometimes i don't care how the sausage is made um Alec Pierce was at 100% snaps, three for three, 53. Um, here's another guy that's going to have his weeks. And uh, when you're looking at like a Wandale Robinson or, uh, you know, I can't, guys like that that are just going to be these low, low ceiling, high floor type of plays, I will rather take an Alec Pierce out and 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 hope that he gets home with, with a deep shot. Um, uh, Josh Downs is at 71% snaps, six for five for 135 and a touchdown. And his touchdown came on an offside busted coverage. Uh, Kyle Granson was out with a concussion. Uh, Andrew Ogletree was at 60% snaps, no targets um, in his start. So again, the 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 aberration of being the tight end for the Colts uh, when you're wrong, you're wrong. Um, in my case, uh, moving on the Redskins, uh, Sam Hell again, you're playing with fire, and, and he only gave you like 10 points. Uh, most of it kind of came on the ground. Um, one touchdown or one interception. I didn't even write down his stats. Because uh, I think there's better guys at this point that you can roll out there off of waivers like uh, Gardner Minshew if you're worried about that. So Brian Robinson was at 49% snaps, 8 for 23 and a tug. He did have the red zone carry and a target. Uh, Antonio Gibson was at 38% snaps, 4 for 7 and a red zone carry, 2 for 2 for 24. Um, the big news, uh, Chris Rodriguez at 13% of snaps, 7 for 31, 2 red zone carries. So at this point... Um, if you have the ability and you're not outside of just the B Rob, if you're the B Rob owner, you're you. I would be picking up Chris Rodriguez. If you're outside of uh you know uh, the B Rob owner, I I would and I have the ability to stash a, a Chris Rodriguez. He's more efficient on the carries that he's getting, and I could definitely see him eating into everybody else's work as that goes on. But the main thing is he those two red zone carries. Um, are going to be more predictive of how he's used in the future going forward with his ability to fall into the end zone. Um, yeah. So eventually, and I have this written down on my notes, I could see that someone's going to get kicked out of this running back rotation. And the uh, uh, real life trade deadline is next Tuesday. So I, I could see someone getting kicked out of the rotation because of the trade deadline, like uh, Antonio Gibson. Scary Terry was at 88% snaps, nine for six for 90. And again, like I talked about AJ Brown on the sausage show uh, and a McClure is not a guy that um, is ever going to be attached to a good offense at this point, but I'm not going to be able to buy an AJ Brown and his targets. I am going to be able to buy a scary Terry. Those, those uh, huge target shares, vertical shots downfield. I can target a, a scary Terry in a way that I cannot target an AJ Brown. And as long as he's getting the work that he's getting right now, having a guy that I can potentially roll out there against an AJ Brown that I can afford to go buy is something that I would be interested in. So he may not be able to win me my league, but he may be the closest that I can buy to doing so. And it's not going to hurt me a lot to find out. So Curtis Samuel was at 55% snaps, eight targets, and, and I think he had an injury or something. Uh, Johan Dotson was at 85% snaps. He dropped the, the game winning touchdown pass. I don't have a lot written down about them because I don't think they're fantasy relevant, um, for week eight anymore. Like if you're rolling some of these guys out, you're desperate. And, and I don't know what your road to winning a league is. Uh, Logan Thomas at 68% snaps, six for four for 51. Again, going to be flirting with that low end, uh, tight end one range because of the checkdowns, just the usage in the offense. Cause they are pushing vertically with their wide receivers. The defense is at new England this week. Um, uh, or, and then week nine, they get New York at home. Um, week seven, I should look that up right now for you guys. All right, so the, the Redskins, they have uh, week eight at Philadelphia, so I'm not rolling them there. But if I'm thinking ahead a week, I would be rolling them out against New England um, at, uh, at on the road against New England. Um, maybe Seattle, there's still a chance. The The Washington uh, secondary is not very good. Um, maybe the Giants. So there, there's some streamability for the, for the Redskins moving forward. Uh, let's see. 
The Cowboys were on a buy this week, and this would be a sneaky week to go out and buy Dak Prescott. Um, you know, coming out of his bye week again, maybe not going to be able to give me the rushing upside that are the overall ceiling I need to compete against the um, elite quarterbacks, but he may have enough of a rushing floor or the possibility of a rushing floor. And this is a guy that I can afford to go buy if, if uh, he's available in my league. So uh, the dolphins, I said, we're going to talk a lot about the dolphins today. So this is the third time the dolphins have played a not bad defense week two, week four, week seven. And I can actually do what I talked about and pull up the dolphins. So they played uh, new England week two. And again, New England tends to take away the number one wide receiver. Um, They played the Buffalo Bills week four. Buffalo Bills may not be a good defense, but they're not a bad defense. And and the Buffalo got after the the Dolphins. And then they played Philadelphia week seven. Um, At this point, like um, Tua may only be a streamer against defenses that are not good. Um, Otherwise, he may not give you the ability he's going to give you less than 40 degree day and if he gives you a less than 40 degree day you're not going to win your week uh, especially from the quarterback position when there may be guys that are more predictive coming out of uh, the waiver wire every week uh, than Tua is at this point going up against good defenses so week eight against uh, the Patriots I may not be interested nor week uh, nine against Kansas City because Kansas City may have at least not a bad defense so uh, moving forward like maybe week 11, maybe not the, 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 the jets. Um, so there's, there's guys coming up that I'm not going to be as excited to be rolling this offense out against in the future. If this guy can't get me there. And part of the problem with Tua is going to be that he lacks the uh, rushing floor to get me there. So Raheem Mostert was at 53% of snaps, um, nine for 45, three for one for six. And this is not me saying like, Oh, panic on the dolphins. It's, Being aware of how I should uh, design my roster going forward, knowing what gives me the best opportunity to win. So if I know that I might have a problem with Tua and the Dolphins offense, I can pick up a quarterback like a Minshew now, and and I'm not competing for it later on when it becomes a problem. So Mostert, uh, 53% stats, 9 for 45, 3 for 1 for 6. Again, some guys are going to have bad days. Um, it's the NFL. There are professionals um, playing football and coaching. Solomon Ahmed was at 37% snaps, two for three for uh, another two targets, one reception, zero uh, yards. Jeff Wilson was only at 14% snaps, one for one for four. So I don't know if uh, Ahmed or Wilson are necessarily holdable at this point um, going forward. Maybe they continue to split work. It's no longer going to be the Dolphins RB2 has weekly appeal in fantasy. Tyreek Hill is at 78% of snaps of 15 targets, 11 receptions, 88 yards, and a tug. Um, if you're wondering, this 88-yard uh, performance drops his season projection under 2,200 yards to 2,190. So still ridiculous, uh, you know, legendary season he's putting together. Uh, Jalen Waddle is at 45% snaps. He did leave the game and come back in, so he could have had a better outing. He was at six targets, uh, six receptions, 63 yards. And again, if I can, I still want to be buying pieces of this offense. Uh, Chase Claypool was at 8% snaps, um, and he would need to eat into the Cedric Wilson role. So that's something that I would be looking forward to in the future. And again, I'm not saying sell pieces of the Dolphins. I'm not saying the Dolphins are bad. What I'm saying is uh, how I would uh, try and take advantage of it going forward. I have to view it as a potential problem so I can either – take advantage of an owner that is panicking or I could plan ahead for potential problems. I would still be buying chase Claypool. Um, if I can stash him at the bottom of my bench to see how his snap share goes up versus Cedric Wilson's, that would be interesting to me because I want to be ahead of that spike week. He's already on my bench and I know what's going to happen instead of having to knife fight and waivers and their defense plays new England this week. So again, this would be something that I has appeal if they can jump out and they can put pressure on a bad Patriots offense, Uh, the Eagles. uh, So Jalen hurts is a turnover machine. He has eight picks this year. Um, He had six all of last year and nine in 2021. So there is a problem going on with the Eagles. It appears Uh, Deandre Swift that 68% snaps, 15 for 62, one red zone carry three for three for 13 yards. He may be a sell because uh, Kenny Daniel was at 
32% snaps, eight for 16 and a tug. He got three red zone carries. So if the usage is Kenny Gainwell comes in in the red zone, DeAndre Swift's overall value goes down. Let's see. Uh, AJ Brown, 15 for uh, 10 for 137 and a tug. And congratulations, you you drafted a, an elite wide receiver this year. Um, Devontae Smith was uh, five for four for 49. Um, his stat line right now is on pace for 78 for uh, 930 for five. Um, and that's in line with his 2021 numbers. So uh, if you uh, if you drafted him, he he is looking like he's going to be a bust. And his his the games that he's going to have are probably going to be non predictive. Julio Jones was at 22% snaps, one for uh, one for three in his debut. I don't think he's going to be fantasy relevant, but he immediately came in and got got uh, got a little bit of a run. Um, so he may have some fantasy relevant weeks down the line. Uh, Dallas Goddard was at five for five for 77 in a tug. And um, he's in line to set career highs if he stays healthy. That's always kind of been one of his problems is staying healthy. The defense is at Washington. Um, um, I'd drop him it, it, uh, over the bye week. Uh, I guess you could if, if you're a little worried about it. And they have week 16 and week 17 at the Giants and Arizona. But remember, Arizona now may have Kyler Murray, so they're less appealing to me. Um, it, they haven't been this dominant defense that we, we thought they would. And if the offense... Um, has a little bit of a problem. They're not going to be able to get the uh, the pressure to turn into sacks and sacks to turn into turnovers, which is how uh, defenses score points. So moving forward from that, stuttering, rambling mess. The Falcons, uh, Desmond Ritter was at 25 or 19 to 35 for 250, and he had three fumbles. There's something going on with the Falcons. I'm not going to tell you what to do um, regarding anything else. But I, I don't want pieces of something that I can't control or I can't be predict. And um, if I am rolling out guys for the Falcons, I, 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 I'm, I'm thinking of them being in my low end two to, to, to three range or a flex position so they can't hurt me as much when they have their down weeks like like Bijan. So Bijan was at 17 percent snaps, one for one for three. Whatever's going on with Bijan Gate, um, it should have been disclosed. And I did read that uh, that the NFL is going to be investigating the handling uh, of Bijan with the Falcons. You know, uh, Arthur Smith, uh, Tyler Algier was at 51% of snaps, uh, 21 carries, 59 yards, inefficient, but another three for three for 53. Cold Cordell Patterson was at 40% of snaps, 10 for 56. And, and I hate to break it to everybody out there, he's not going to be going away. Um, he's going to cut into somebody's usage. Um, it may be uh, Tyler Algiers usage. It may be Bijan, but again, I don't trust anything going on with his offense. Um, uh, Drake London was at 85% snaps, uh, seven for six, 54. Again, these are not particularly uh, productive uh, targets that we would like to see. Uh, Kyle Pitts was at 52% snaps, four for three, 47. Again, I'm just going to take it. And Jody Smith, 54% snaps, three for three for 27 still hanging around that low end uh, tight end one range based off of usage. The defense um, is going to be a sneaky play at Tennessee. Um, it looks like uh, uh, it's going to be a timeshare between uh, Malik Willis and uh, Levis going forward. So anyway, moving on to the giants, uh, no news on Danny Dimes still hasn't been cleared for contact. Tyrod Taylor was 29 at 18 for two, 279, two tugs, eight for 25. Um, I don't know. He's streamable. I don't know. I wouldn't trust him. You do you. Uh, Barkley was at 84% snaps, 21 for a 77, another four for three for 41, uh, and a touchdown and a fumble. Um, this low or hyper extended his uh elbow and then just came back in the game because you know Barkley is inhuman. Um, Matt Breda was at 16% snaps, the only other guy to get work. If you're worried about a handcuff, asterisk to that, uh, the Giants did pick up Deion Jackson, formerly of the Colts and the Browns, uh, off of waivers, so that means he's on the active roster whatever that means. So I, maybe if you're holding Brita, you can move on. Uh, Slayton was at 84% snaps, two for one for 22. Uh, Jalen Hyatt, and I've talked about this in the Chasing the Dragon show yesterday, 71% snaps, two for five for 75, 169 air yards. It's going to happen. Um, I don't know if he's necessarily going to be in my lineup when it does happen. Um, this may be kind of the, the, the flopping Darren Waller was at 82% snaps, uh, eight for seven for 98 and a tug. And um, I'm not sure that he's, I, I did have this pulled up. I can actually pull this up for you guys. So uh, Darren Waller's usage 
hasn't been quite what we were hoping for with him being used all over the, 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 the formation. So you see him in week, uh, this is week six against Miami, where he's being flexed out wide uh, to – uh, being flexed out wide and then be also being used in the slot, and then you have these deeper routes. That's that's kind of what uh, we were hoping for where he was getting drafted at. So this last week, he's mostly being used in line or it, as as a as a big slot, and but he's still kind of getting a little bit of the vertical usage, which is good. Um, but if if they are using Waller and he's get, taking away coverage, that means a guy like Jaron uh, Hyatt is eventually going to get home. Um, so that's just something to be aware of. All right. So uh, the defense is uh, the New York Jets week eight. I'm not sure about that, especially with the change with Brees Hall, uh, Zach Wilson being serviceable and Garrett Wilson. So, but uh, maybe week nine at Las Vegas, uh, the Jags. Um, T law was 29 or 20 to 29, 204 uh, with a tug, uh, eight, eight carries 59 yards with uh, a bad knee. I like the rushing work, but I don't like how inconsistent the passing game is. Um, I watched this game live. Um, interesting stuff going on with, with the offense. Uh, Travis uh, Etienne was at 88% snaps, 14 for 53, two tugs, two red zone carries, another five for three for 24 yards. And again, um, he should have had this monster 30, 40 point game and the coaches got cute and he didn't have that game. Um, so again, Whatever's there, whatever they're doing, um, and I don't know if this is just limited to Trevor Lawrence. I, I just don't know what's going on with the offense, and that bothers me um, from a fantasy perspective. Because again, if I can't predict it, predict it, I don't know what's going to go on going forward. Um, but I'm going to take my uh, my my elite uh, Travis Etienne shares, and I'm just going to ride it until the wheels come off. Um, I'm I'm not going to trust Trevor Lawrence though. Uh, Tank Bisky was at 14% snaps. He was only uh, two carries for two yards. The less involved Tanks Bigsby is, that means that he's not really the uh, handcuff, and he won't be the bell cow, bell cow handoff handcuff if Travis Etienne goes down. Uh, Travis Will, uh, Ridley, or excuse me, Calvin Ridley was at eighty-eight percent snaps, and unless the offense changes, where we're getting the eleven targets a game because they're prioritizing getting him the ball, then his overall value changes to the point where I I would be moving on from him. And you know, uh, potentially there may be a change going forward, especially after the long week, the Thursday night game, and a bye coming up. But otherwise, like unless I can see that change where they're like, we have to get the ball to Calvin Ridley, and you need to stop it. If they're just going to go, hey, uh, Christian Kirk is open, or we like the 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 Evan Ingram matchup, and that's what they were doing against the the Saints when they were winning the game. And then when they were losing the game, they decided, no, no, we forgot we have Calvin Ridley. We have to do something else. Um, or we, we, do, we don't care that uh, Travis Etienne is just winning the football game. We need to do something else because we need to be cute. I don't like those things in fantasy. Um, let's see. Christian Kurt was at 80% snap, 6 for 6 for 90 in a tug. And again, um, I'm rolling him out there because as long as they decide to use them as, as uh, the guy that they want to get the football to when they give the matchup, he's always going to have the matchup in the slot or wherever else they use him because other teams are taking away Calvin Ridley because he's the one that they that scares them. Um, Zay Jones, I don't have any injury news on. Uh, Evan Ingram was at 82% snap, 7 for 5 for 45. Went there when they had the matchup, which I do like. Um, Brenton Strange was only at 23, 23% snaps, and this was just a game script thing for the indie game. So I'm, I'm not worried about him cutting into Evan Ingram anymore um, at all. Uh, the defense goes at Pittsburgh, who look better this week, and then they have their bye coming up. So the Jets, um, they're coming off their bye week. I didn't come up with this. I was listening, I think, Fantasy Pros uh, podcast. Uh, Dalvin Cook is being shopped. I think he's kind of spent, but um, other teams may not, and he may go into an advantageous position coming up. So he is a guy that I would be stashing um, at the bottom of my bench, hoping that he goes to a running back needy team um after the buy or at, before the trade deadline um i think that's a, a pretty good use of capital in this case uh garrett wilson is a sneaky buy this week because if he can continue and i will bring him up so we can discuss garrett wilson showing again that i am thoroughly prepared for what i was going to do so garrett wilson uh, as the offense has gotten better especially with Brees wall hall being uh, a full go 
you know, that the eight targets, nine targets, 14, seven, 12, that's probably going to continue to move forward down the line. And again, what I'm looking at just a pure opportunity standpoint, that, that nine, 10, 11 targets is that supreme elite area of wide receiver. And if that's how the, 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 the jets are going to use them, I want pieces of that because there will be almost guaranteed spike weeks based off of just the pure opportunity, the volume of opportunity. So it, it would at the very least push Garrett Wilson into that like wide receiver two range. If not the possibility that um, God forbid he could turn into a, a wide receiver one again. All right. So uh, their defense this week goes up against the New York giants. And again, that would be uh, Tyra Taylor right now. Um, and a very suspect New York giants team. All right, the Lions, um, this was not a good game, so take everything I have to say with a grain of salt. So Jared Goff was 53, uh, 33 for 53 for 280 and a touchdown. Um, I don't really have a lot to say because guys are going to have bad weeks. Uh, David Montgomery, no injury news right now that I saw while I'm recording this. Uh, Jameer Gibbs was at 87% snaps, 11 for 68 and a touchdown. Uh, 10 for 9 for 58, um, and the game script, This the, a lot of this had to do with the game script. There was a lot of garbage time pr of production when it comes to Jameer Gibbs. So, uh, again, take this with a grain of salt. The big news behind it is, yeah, probably probably a, a, a pretty good handcuff. Uh, you David Montgomery owner, you want to have Jameer Gibbs going down the line for uh, uh, the fantasy playoffs. Uh, the Sun God was at 97% snaps. Again, when we talk about opportunity, 19 targets. 13 receptions, 102 yards, uh, and he had 127 air yards. And I bring up the air yards because Jamison Williams was up to 44% snaps, six targets, 142 air yards. So Jamison Williams will have his weeks. They're going to be non-productive or predictive, and that means that su the Sun God is going is actually kind of more of a wide receiver too um, from a fantasy perspective because they're just going to be weeks where they don't need him. And this week they needed him. Like I talked about last week, it was not a Laporta week because he didn't get his air yards, and that turns into a Sun God week. So the Sun God is going to probably be the beneficiary of uh, of the guys' weeks that don't get there with the air yards if they when they try and push it vertically down the field. Laporta was at seventy two percent snaps, seven for six for fifty two yards. Again, um, I'm I'm rolling him. You know, mid to, to high end tight end still doesn't matter. Bad week. Uh, they play uh, Las Vegas week eight and then they're a hold after the bye because again they're probably going to be attached to good offense and good offenses let uh let their defense pin their ears back and cause pressure pressure equals sacks sacks equal turnovers all right so the pack i watched some of the tape on this uh jordan love was uh 16 to 30 for 182 yards he's, he's not very accurate when he pushes the ball down the field i don't need to tell you that from a, a fantasy perspective i don't care because he's gonna hover in that high end streamer low end quarterback one range because of all the weapons that he has, um, as long as the coaches get out of the way. And uh, let's see, again, as bad as we may think some of these guys are, they're still professionals, even in a bad matchup against the Broncos. Um, you know, guys can some, somehow find ways to get it done. What concerns me with the Packers is Aaron Jones was at 36% of snaps, eight carries, 35 yards, another five yards, five targets, three receptions, 22 yards. And I don't know if this is a hamstring issue or a bad coaching issue at this point. Um, that worries me more than Jordan Love maybe not being good at football. A.J. Dillon, 64% snaps, 15 for 61. Again, not particularly efficient, but another two for two for 34 in the air. And again, I have no idea. Um, you know, Keep him, uh, drop him, sell Aaron Jones. Um, I, the other, the other issue is if they can't win enough games, they're not going to be relevant anyway. So who knows what's going to go on in Green Bay. Uh, Romeo Dobbs, 81% snaps, five for two for 30 yards and touchdown. Um, and again, uh, I think the uh, Jaden Reed, 48% four, snaps, four for three for 21 yards and a touchdown. That touchdown was intended for Dobbs and Dobbs dropped it. So do with that with what you will with the red zone targets. Uh, Christian Watson has a knee injury, I guess. I don't have any news on it right now. Did play 88% snaps because he got hit injured like the last play of the game. Five for three for 27 yards. And again, you're always going to be chasing that ridiculous efficiency. And if Jordan Love does not have the deep ball accuracy that uh, Aaron Rodgers ha did, surprise, surprise, uh, Christian Watson is going to be a complete bust this year. Um, Luke Musgrave, if you're wondering, um, 
67 percent uh snaps uh five for four for 30 yards only 18 air yards again this is a coaching issue even if he's healthy uh i did see that he didn't uh get a concussion he has an ankle problem right now um and again i don't want any pieces of it because this is either a trash play by love or trash coaching and either way like if I can't predict usage and it's not the right value usage from a fantasy perspective, I, I don't care. It's And this is the opposite problem of Josh Allen. I forgot to talk about this with Josh Allen. Um, again, Josh Allen only wants the, uh, the, the high uh, value plays. He doesn't want to check the football down, believe that or not. And that's how he gets himself in the trouble being a turnover machine. Um, and a, a good quarterbacks know when to take what's given and then have to push the ball, take, take the chance. Um, and if Jordan Love isn't good pushing the ball down the field, they're just not going to uh, do it as often, and they're going to keep him in the, the the lower efficiency range, which doesn't necessarily help us from a fantasy perspective. But again, he's got so many weapons that he can hover around fantasy relevant for the rest of the year. And I don't have anything on their defense. The Panthers are coming out of a buy. The biggest issues to talk about with the, the Panthers is they are a sneaky buy right now. Um even though there's no, no one to buy. Uh, Frank Wright is giving up play calling duties, so there could be a change in overall usage for the Panthers going forward. Chuba Hubbard and Miles Sanders may end up splitting the backfield. Um, so Jonathan Mingo and uh, Adam Thielen, the ghost of Adam Thielen. Adam Thielen may be a sell right now to get ahead of the usage and the change in the play calling coming out of the buy. Jonathan Mingo would be a stash because... I would be hoping that the usage change would allow the draft capital to actually push vertically down the field, if that makes sense. And I'm at about an hour, so I want to get off here pretty soon. Uh, Mac Jones, I did look at this. I do think I have this pulled up. I do not. So Mac Jones, and again, all we need to see out of guys is the ability to manage an offense. And you see uh, Mac Jones this last week uh, against Buffalo, I mean, there's only one target over 20 yards. He just takes what's given. He stays on, on schedule. Um, it kind of helps Ramondre Stevenson. If Ramondre Stevenson can do what he did this week, it moves him into the running back two range again. Um, I did sell one of my shares of him. Um, Ramondre was at 65% snaps, nine for 34, another six for six for 51 through the air. If he's their top receiver, and it looks like he may be, that, that just moves him up the food chain. And as long as... Uh, Mac Jones could just stay on schedule and make this an okay offense or not bad offense. It, it pushes up the Ramondre shares. Zeke was at 35% snaps, 11 for, for 31 and a tug in one target. Um, so this may no longer be a bad offense. It's just not going to be a good offense, um, which is all I would really care about, but at least we know what the running back splits going to be. And if Ramondre is going to get that receiving floor, that makes him a weekly start again and potentially a buy to be aware of um i have uh kendrick Bourne. if you're wondering 93 percent snap seven for six for 63 a touchdown and a fumble um and all i have to say about him is, is he's not going to win you any leagues and i've talked about a lot of other guys i think have much higher upside especially from a week-to-week -week standpoint uh defensively uh they play miami maybe some issues with miami going forward especially against this patriot defense just the way that the patriots are designed uh, the Raiders, uh, jo uh, uh, Brian Hoyer was bad. That's all I got to say. O'Connell may be slightly better. It may not matter because Jimmy G uh, may be back this week. Josh Jacobs, 66% snaps, 1135, four for one for six. May have been dinged up in this. Uh, something to be monitoring going forward. I, I just have written down my notes. Man, I hope the Raiders uh, sell their toys at the trade deadline. So um, Zamir White. 22% snaps in a blowout, two for two for one, not efficient on the ground. Dude did do uh, three targets, three receptions for 26 uh, through the air. So he's probably the clear handcuff considering Amir Abdullah was only at 15% snaps and had no opportunities. So again, um, if, I, if I'm wondering, I'm stashing Zamir White uh, in a lot of places that I can. Um, and I don't, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any word that there's, or ha haven't seen any rumors that the Raiders are looking to sell anybody other than they will not be selling Devontae Adams. 75% snaps, 12 targets, 7 receptions, 57 yards. Uh, Jacoby Myers, 94% snaps, 13 for 7 for 50, got there with the tug. Trey Tucker, again, 49% uh, snaps, 3 for 2 for 16 yards, didn't have the air yards this week. Um, but again, 
Uh, progression is not always linear. I'm more concerned with the snap share going up. Once he gets in that 70% range, I'm more concerned with the uh, the usage and how much predictive it's going to be um, with how he's being used. Uh, Michael Mayer was at 71% snaps, four for two for 13. He's a hold this week. Austin Hooper stayed at 34% snaps. So again, um, just a bad week. Progression is not always linear. What I did like uh, with Michael Mayer, and I can't pull this up, is two weeks ago how they were using him, not just an inline tight end. They were flexing him out, design passing work. It's just a bad week sometimes, and uh, Jimmy G may be the best of the quarterbacks. I think Aiden O'Connell may be the best overall out of the bunch, um, and I just don't know what the Raiders are doing because like, they're not going to win anything. Why aren't they at least finding out what they have in Aiden, Aiden O'Connell? We already know what they have in Brian Hoyer. And if Jimmy G gives them the best chance or gives us the best chance from a fantasy perspective to roll our toys out, then that's what I will take. Uh, the Rams. So a uh, weird game because the Steelers are not particularly good on defense. Uh, Stafford was a uh, 14 for 29, 231, a tug and a pick. And the TJ Watt pick was very pretty uh, from a TJ Watt standpoint. Uh, very telling for a Matt Stafford standpoint. If you're wondering how, Matt Stafford plays football, just stares the guy down that he's going to throw to, and T.J. Watt just read it all the way and picked it off. So Bob's your uncle. That's how it works. Uh, Kyron Williams and Ronnie Rivers were IR'd, so don't expect them back until week 11. Uh, Zach Evans, and I talked about this before, Zach Evans, no snaps. Uh, Royce Freeman uh, was at 43% snaps, 12 for 66. Maybe the guy I'm more interested in, Dar uh, Darrell Henderson, 57% snaps, 18 for 61, fell in the end zone, two targets, one reception, five yards. Um, he did revert back to the practice squad. Um, Miles Gaskin was inactive. Um, he's also a guy that I would be stashing. But again, I just don't know how this backfield is going to shake out come uh, week 11 when Kyron Williams comes back. Uh, Cooper Cup was at 100% snaps, seven for two for 29 yards. Um, I did see that the Steelers ran a lot of man. Um, so Puka's just really good. Um, you know, 92% snap, 12 for eight for 154, which is roasting them all over the place. So again, it, it just may be a, an issue of one guy's going to eat some weeks, the other guy's not, and then they're both going to get there some weeks and be in that wide receiver two range. Um, so I'm not selling Puka. I'm not selling cup. I just think that it downgrades them slightly to, uh, what they're going to be from a week to week standpoint. Um, the Ravens. So when you're wrong, you're wrong. Lamar Jackson, really good at football. Uh, I watched this. I mean, just doing whatever he wants to do, scoring touchdowns all over the place. Uh, you know, 20 or 21 to 27, 357, three tugs, another nine for 36 on the ground with a tug. Again, um, you know, that's why the elite quarterbacks matter. And that's why looking for particular traits in guys coming off the waiver wire from a quarterback position is more important than arguing about if they're good at football. Uh, Gus Bus was at 50% snaps, 16 for 64, and a touchdown, another one reception for 80 yards. Uh, Justice Hill was at 50% snaps. Again, this was in a blowout, four for 46, one for one for two. Keaton Mitchell was at 3% snaps, uh, which was two snaps, one for one uh, for one, or one for one for nine in the passing game and pulled his hamstring and was out. And again, if you're running pieces of this backfield, um, I hope your roster squared away and you can deal with their less than 40 degree days, or you're really desperate. Because again, I just don't know how it's going to shake out week to week. Zay Flowers, 70% snaps and a blowout, six for four for 75, 52 air yards. You know, again, he's a, a weekly start in, in, in most capacities at this point. The rest of the wide receivers shook out um, OBJ at 57% snaps. Aguilar was at 37% snaps and Bateman was at 48% snaps. I don't trust any of them. Uh, Mark Andrews at 73% snaps. Four for six for 63, two tugs. So he's staying on 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 pace, if not uh, going to exceed his 10 touchdown pace at this point. So, you know, uh, going to be able to go up against a lot of wide receiver twos, one for uh, apples to apples. And again, I just wrote down the, the offense looked really good, um, and you know, against a, a team that I thought was going to be a really good game. Um, so, again, uh, the defense. Um, upgrades especially because of what they did against what i thought was going to be a good lions team or good alliance offense so again I'm, I'm i'm rolling them at arizona and the rough schedule that they have seattle cincinnati the chargers the rams jacksonville san francisco miami and the chip um i'm probably holding instead of dropping it at this point like they're they may be a weekly start and i might not have to uh uh matchup stream uh the saints Derek carr was a 
55 or 33 55 301 tug and a pick um and he should have had another touchdown uh but it was dropped um i won't ever trust him um you can do whatever you want to do i don't know how many 50 attempt games that the saints will have left on their schedule alvin kamara's at 73 percent stats as long as Derek carr is the quarterback alvin kamara's ridiculous usage so he had 17 carries 62 yards he had uh six red zone carries that i have written down <laughs> and one target uh, he had a two-point conversion. He also had 14 targets, 12 receptions, and 91 yards. So in PPR scammer leagues, I mean, he's just going to get you there as a wide receiver alone. And all the uh, the rushing work and the uh, red zone carries are just gravy at this point. Uh, and I have written down in my notes, Carr's basically using Kamara as the number one read, even on plays that it's not designed to go. In the, he's just looking downfield and then go, I'm going to throw it to Kamara. That's what's going on. Uh, again, watch part of this game. Jamal Williams was at 22% snaps, uh, five for 14, and did have a red zone carry. So if I'm cuffing uh, Kamara, it's going to be Jamal Williams. Kendra Miller, uh, 3% snaps, no opportunities. Uh, Chris Olave was arrested for speeding yesterday, I believe it was. 81% snaps, 15 targets, 7 receptions, 57 yards. Uh, chase, We've always been chasing air yards with him. Uh, again, like I, I watched some of the tape and the usage and – um, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I, I don't particularly like the effort. I mean, even though I think Michael Thomas came out and defended him, I don't know if he'll ever move out of that mid-range wide receiver two range. That's all I'm going to say about him, his ability to win you a league. Um, Michael Thomas was at 83% snaps, 7 for 3 for 42 yards and a tug, um, and he's barely on the fantasy radar at this point. Uh, Rashid Shahid is moving up a little bit, 70% snaps, 8 targets. They're the better targets that we like. And uh, four for twenty-eight. So if there's a if there if there's a flop in usage that I'd be looking for, Rashid Shahid may be able to move into a weekly starter role. Uh, Taysom Hill was at fifty-eight percent snaps. Like I said, design passing work there that I like. Five for four for fifty yards and a reception. Um, let's see, uh, another five for eighteen and a touchdown on the ground. And again, we know we're going to be playing with fire with Taysom Hill, but there are probably worse options at tight end. Even though Jawan uh, Johnson is going to be back this week, that might cut into some of Taysom Hill's usage. Uh, I don't know. Again, when I'm in the range of trying to look for uh, tight ends that are going to fall in the end zone, Taysom Hill probably has the best opportunity to do it on a week to week basis. Uh, but I know I'm going to get burned. And the defense goes at Indy, at uh, at home against Chicago, at Minnesota, by at Atlanta. So there's there's a lot of usage to get out of their of their defense from a week to week basis. Uh, the Seahawks. Gino just remains like a low end starter, a uh, high end streamer. And, and again, I, I, same thing I said last week, he's never going to be elite. That's partially because they can lean on Walker. They have a good defense and he's got limitations of himself. So Kenneth Walker was at 80% snaps without uh, Jack, Zach Charbonnet, uh, 26 uh, carries 105 yards. And they're three for two for six, whatever. Um, if not elite, very close to it. Or if elite, whatever I said. He's, he's very close to being elite, if not elite. DK Murs, uh, missed time for the first time in his career. We, I did talk about this yesterday and chasing the dragon. So Tyler Lockett was at 70% snaps, uh, 5 for 4 for 38. Um, again, this may be the passing of the torch to the other guys in the offense. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to predict usage week to week. Uh, JSN was at 63% snaps, was in on two wide receiver snaps or sets, which is a big deal. Some of the time he was flopping in and out. Uh, seven for four for 63 yards and a tug. Uh, I don't think I could find anything on his snaps to see how vertical they were getting. Jake Bobo was at 75 yards and he's just really good at football at this point, blocking wide receiver that can actually catch. Um, I, I would be stashing him in dynasty leagues, five for four for 61 yards and a tug. I've been talking about Jake Bobo. Like, you know, he's another camp camp guy, uh, hype guy. Um, hopefully, you know, you have him um, wherever you can get him. Um, I did look up DK contract situation he is attached to the Seahawks and thing until 2025. Uh, Noah Fant, uh, 42% snaps, one for one for nine. He's just not a thing. Um, that might have been left over from last week. I don't know. Uh, the defense, Cleveland, uh, week 10 at Washington, all at home. And then that's in between uh, Baltimore week nine uh, on the road. So I they have uh, some usage, especially against a P.J. Walker-led team. Um, who I think he's thrown like four interceptions so far this year. And Washington, Sam Howell is a sack machine. So yeah, um, I would be uh, rolling the Seahawks out if there's no other options in your league. 
Uh, Steelers, Kenny Pickett looked really good. Um, it's amazing what happens when you let a good player look like he's great because you have good coaching. And I'm not saying there was good coaching. I'm just saying Kenny Pickett has some skill. Uh, Kenny Pickett was uh, 17 and 25 for 230. Um, guys got a little nimbly bimbly. But the biggest thing we like from a fantasy perspective is his ability to maximize the other the guys on the field because I don't think Kenny Pickett, outside of like really desperate streaming, has any value. Uh, Najee Harris was at 58% snaps, uh, 14 for 30, 53 the better Kenny Pickett plays, the more opportunity Najee is going to have to fall into the end zone. Um, three of three for 15 yards. He did fumble, but he didn't lose it. Jalen Warren was at 48% snaps, six for 32, uh, a tug, and two for one for negative one yards. So again, I, I kind of would guess that if the Steelers can be in competitive games, it may push Najee into that low end running back two range and move Warren back into that like more desperation flex range. Uh, George Pickens was at 90% snaps, um, eight targets, five receptions, 107. Um, I do have written down that I'm supposed to pull up his next-gen stats. So relative to the other guys, you can see George Pickens is pushing the ball vertical down the field. That's what we like from a fantasy perspective. These are higher value plays, lower probability, but higher volume plays. But it doesn't matter because as long as Pickens can get the the, the targets, he's going to convert them into production. So these are the type of things that we like to see. He can have lower opportunities just based off of these routes. And all you have to do is let Kenny Pickett throw the ball to a guy who's really good at running these routes and not run other stuff that they're not good at. So I like what's going on right now with the Steelers. So Deontay Johnson, um, 66% of snaps coming back, uh, six for five for 79. And this pushes Deontay back if the offense can say at least serviceable into, uh, you know, flex range, wide receiver three range. Uh, Muth got IR to repeat, I think from last week. The defense, uh, the defense isn't particularly good this year statistically. The Jaguars, they got the Jaguars coming up. Jaguars may not be good. Tennessee, again, with those two quarterbacks. Green Bay, Jordan Love's not good. Uh, at Cleveland, again, they're not particularly good. And then you start hitting in the, the Cincinnati, uh, Arizona coming back with Kyler. Uh, the Patriots aren't necessarily good. And then Gardner Minshew in, in Indianapolis. So it, it doesn't really matter if the Pittsburgh's not good. They might just have really good matchups coming out down the line. Uh, the Texans are coming out of a bye week. Uh, we have Damian Pierce being a sell right now because I'm expecting the usage flop to continue off of last week. So Devin Singletary is a sneaky stash coming out of waivers. Uh, uh, expecting that, that 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 flop is going to occur with the usage. Uh, Dalton Schultz is uh, a pickup. If he was dropped, he may be the number two in this offense, and we want pieces of good offenses. And the Texans, at the very least, are not bad. Uh, the defense, they go at Carolina, at Tampa Bay, um, and I still have written down minus Cincinnati Week 10. So they, they might have um, weekly appeal. Head coach is a defensive coach, so I, I would imagine the Texans defense is never necessarily going to be bad. They may not be good, but they're not going to be bad. Uh, the Titans, they're coming out of a bye week. So uh, Tannehill's unlikely with an ankle injury. And I did read today that um, there may be some expectation that Malik Willis and Will Levis will be splitting time at quarterback. Um, so, yeah, I, I would like to stream all uh, stream against this team going forward. And Malik Willis's sneaky, cute ability to be a rushing quarterback, um, not going to happen if he's splitting time with Will Levis. You know, neither of them are useful. Uh, Spears, again, he's a pickup. Uh, don't know what's going to go on with Derrick Henry, but again, uh, has league winning ability if Derrick Henry is traded or uh, is injured. Their defense uh, does have some uh, sneaky appeal at Atlanta week eight at Pittsburgh. Again, Pittsburgh's been all over the place. Tampa at Tampa Bay, that's D Baker May at Jacksonville. Jacksonville has been inconsistent. Carolina with their issues, maybe Indy with Gardner Minshew. And that's all before they hit Miami where I wouldn't be rolling them out. But in the meantime, um, in your deeper leagues, if you, if you, if you want to have a defense that you know that you can roll out for the time being, the Titans are not necessarily a bad option and then stream around them. Uh, Vikings, uh, Monday night football, Kirk Cousins, a uh, roller coaster. 
I, I called this. I said I would not be surprised if he carves up the Niners. Uh, 35 of 45, 378, two touchdowns, and a pick. That's Kirk Cousins. Um, if you drafted him to be your quarterback one, you should have known what you're getting. He's going to give you some very bad weeks, and then he's going to give you a lot of 40-degree days, and he's going to win you games that you didn't think that he had a chance to win you. So hopefully you rolled him out. Uh, Alexander Madison was at 53% snaps, eight uh, carries, 39 yards, another uh, three targets, two receptions, three yards. Cam Akers is at 39% snaps. 10 for 31, 3 for 2 for 30 in the passing game. And I have in my notes, um, I, I guess this is going to settle into a very unpredictable timeshare. Um, you know, maybe there's going to be a hot hand. Uh, you know, it's going to be very hard to predict who's going to fall into the end zone or who's going to be uh, efficient on a week to week basis. So that outside of desperation, I wouldn't be rolling these guys out. Uh, Jordan Addison, you know, bell of the ball, you know, hopefully uh, you, you got him. I think you, he went in the 10th and the ninth rounds in my two drafts that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, he used 74% snaps, did leave for a little while with uh, what, what was reported as cramps, 10 targets, seven receptions, 124 yards, two tugs, really good at football. Um, uh, KJ Osborne was at 93% snaps, six for five for 47. TJ Hawkinson, 84% snaps, 12 targets, 11 receptions, 86 yards. So again, um, those guys that we can predict are the number one or number two tight ends in their offense have a lot of value. So the defense has a lot of sneaky appeal going up against Jordan Love, who may be bad at football this week. All right, to recap, week nine buys are the Broncos, the Lions, the Jags, the Niners. I want to be planning accordingly, not just for my lineup, but for my opponent's lineup. Um, Pierre Strong, if he uh, falls through waivers or I can get him on the cheap, uh, Che McBride or Trey McBride, the tight end for the Cardinals, is a stash. Amari D. Mercado has uh, some immediate RB2 value from just from an opportunity standpoint, 80% snaps, uh, probably going to be in that 12 to 20 touches a game range. And that offense may be better when Kyler Murray gets back. So I want pieces of that offense, buying pieces of the cards offense on the cheap right now. Uh, Rasheed Rice shouldn't be available in your leagues. Neither should Josh Downs, but if they're available on the waiver wire, I think they're good pickups. Um, I'm buying pieces of Scary Terry if I can, because um, he may not win me a league, but he's close enough that I think I can get him on the cheap relative to his value. I'm stashing Chris Rodriguez if I'm a B-Rob owner, um, and he probably has some standalone value going forward anyway, heading into the uh, uh, trade deadline. Uh, Jalen Hyatt is a stash, if not a sneaky roll. Chuba Hubbard, Hubbard is a stash. Um, Jonathan Mingo, uh, wide receiver for the Panthers, is a stash. Uh, let's see. I want to be picking up any of the Rams running backs that fall through uh, waivers for free because I just don't know how the backfield is going to shake up until Kyron Williams comes back. Again, Kyron Williams is probably a sell. It's going to be hard to sell an injured running back, but I, I just don't know what the running back situation is going to be going forward, and I don't like predict uh, unpredictability in fantasy football. Taysom Hill, uh, I said, I just have written down sure on the cheap if I can. Devin Singletary is a stash, potentially could be rolled out this week as, with the expectation that the usage will flop coming out of the bye. Um, JSN should be rostered in all leagues already. Um, Bobo, especially in deeper leagues. And if DK continues to split uh, miss time, they're both roles. Uh, Dalton Schultz, if he was dropped over the bye week, uh, you know, obviously shouldn't have been, but if he is, um, may meet the criteria for a weekly starter tight end. Uh, Tajay Spears, if he's available, still got league winner all written all over him. And then the final guy, Jake Ferguson, coming out of the bye week, if I'm really uh, tight end desperate to stash and see how the offense looks coming out of the bye week for the Cowboys tight end position. So anyway, that's about all I got this week. Um, a little bit long, but uh, I put in a little bit of effort and yeah.